We're ready to roll. All right. All right, first one. And this is what I need you to do every single time you know you have to factor a problem. Every single time. I'm going to show you three methods today, but I need you to focus on one the first time, and that's called the GCF method. See if you can take anything out first. All right? I don't care what if it's got three terms, ten terms, in this case two. See if you can take anything out. And you guys notice we can take something out that's in common here. Started you off nice and easy day one, seniors, right? We can take out... Take out an A. Good. Yes. Take out an A. And don't worry, I'm not going to call anybody until tomorrow with the generator. Just get you guys used to me here. And now I take an A. And when we say take out, we're really dividing each of them by A. All right. When we say take out, we're taking AB divided by A. So that leaves me that B. And we're taking 2A divided by A. And that leaves me my 2. So that's what I'm left with there. Always look for a GCF first. Always. Always. All right, second method. Well, before I get to the second method, anything I can take out that's in common? No, right? The first two have H's, but the 10 doesn't. So I can't take out an H, and there's no number in common either that I can take out. So do we all see there is no GCF to take out? All right, so now I need a new method. And here's my new method. I see that it has one, two, three terms. That's why I call it a trinomial. And notice the number out in front. It's one. So you guys will play a game right now. Two numbers that multiply to that number 10, but at the same time add to 7. And I get it. I'm not, I'm not going to fight it anymore every year. If you want to go to your calculator and do the cool y equals trick, right? What, 10 divided by x? Is that what you guys do? To figure out the numbers? You do you. You do you. Or you can think of it in your head. I wrote out my choices that multiply to 10 right here. Here are all the numbers that multiply to 10. 1 in 10. 2 and 5, but I can only pick the pair that adds the 7. So there's only going to be one pair and 2 and 5. So I always start with the numbers that multiply first. That's where I always start. Write them off to the side. So now we have two parentheses. If you remember this, I got H and H, right? And I know my numbers are 2 and 5. I just have to put the correct signs in front. So it adds to 7 and multiplies the positive 10, and that's on you guys now. All right, great job getting those two numbers, 2 and 5, but now you got to figure out what the sign should be in front of them. And the only way I can get them to add to 7 is plus plus. All right. So you have GCF, and then if you have three terms where the number out in front is 1, you do a little of this guess and check detective method, play a little game. All good. All right, let's go to this next one. All right, first thing, right off the bat, is there a GCF? X squared minus 100. No, I don't see any. Why can't I do the second method I just did? There's only two, right? There's only two terms there. So I'm not going to be multiplying to this and add to this. So now we come to our final method I'm going to review today, which is called difference of two perfect squares. Before we do this one factoring-wise, I want to go over what's considered a perfect square. Because I say perfect squaring. Maybe I know one or two. I want to write down a bunch here that I need you to be familiar with. I'll start you off. Four is a perfect square. Anything else? Nine. Oh, are we establishing a pattern now? If you want a perfect square, you take a number and square it. So two squared, three squared, four to the, four to the second. Here you go. Ready? 25, 36, 49, and I'll stop at 64. But there should be, well, actually, no, no, I'm not. We're, we're better than that. I got to train you like beasts here. 64, oh, 81, and I'll stop at 100. There might be something bigger. Great! But I need you to know something else are perfect squares. Variables. What, when is a variable considered a perfect square? Ready? X squared is a perfect square. Y to the fourth is a perfect square. B to the sixth is a perfect square. What's considered a perfect square with a variable? If the exponent is even. All right, if the exponent is even, it is a perfect square. All good. I need you guys to be able to recognize when those numbers and variables come up. So does everyone see the first one? X squared, it's perfect. 100, 
perfect. So this is going to be difference of two perfect squares. What's it going to look like? Well, first, let's talk about this. Signs are always opposite when you do this method. Signs are always opposite. X squared becomes X and X. And if you're unsure, you can go to your calculator, square root of 100, 10 and 10. Signs are always opposite. Hey, that's algebra one. We're in algebra two, big boy, big girl math now. We gotta be able to do the second one now. This is the level I need you at. First, is there a GCF? Anything in common I could take out? Because I'm preaching it, you gotta look for that first. Nope, there's two terms, but what do we notice about them? Nine, what do you know? X squared, boom, 16. And Y to the fourth, perfect square. See how all of these are a perfect square? All right, let's try to factor it then. At least get in my plus minus. What do you think for a nine? What's the nine gonna change into? Three, right, square root. X squared into, so I got three X and three X. And what do I do with that 16 Y to the fourth? What's 16 become? Four Y squared, good. You just cut the exponent in half. And then 4y squared. All right. Last thing before we get to some randoms. Difference of two perfect squares. Notice what symbol was in between both the perfect squares here. Subtract. It's got to be subtraction. If I replace addition, we are not, not, not factoring that. Okay. It is not sum of two perfect squares. It's difference. All right, it's got to be subtraction in between the perfect squares. If it's a plus, we cannot, it's unfactorable, unless you take out a GCF if you can. All right, anything from you guys? We good? It's getting intense, huh? Here we go. Good thing you guys are my last group of the day here. All right, let's see what you got. You're going to use one of the three methods. Which one's it going to be? All right, let's look at the first one, GCF. That's how I'm going to start each one. GCF and number one. Absolutely not. Oh, it's got how many terms? Three, number out in front is one. Now we play a little game. Multiplies to this and adds to this. So I got X and X. Again, start with 24. If you have to write them off to the side, write them off to the side. One and 24, two and 12, three and eight. Or if you just go to your calculator and do the divided by trick, that's fine too. But I need two numbers that multiply to 24, but are going to give me two somehow, two apart. It's okay to do a little work on the side. Anybody find those numbers? What do you got? What are those numbers? Six. And I'll just do six and four first. All right. Those are my numbers. Multiply to 24. All right. How do I get them to add to two? If the six is positive and the four negative. All right. Any issues there? All right, ready to keep going? Two, GCF, GCF, nope, nope. Ooh, ooh, what do we know though? A squared, B squared, what are those? Perfect squares, because the exponents are even. And I know we didn't go up this high, but also 144 is a perfect square. So this is difference of two perfect squares, plus minus, opposite signs. Ooh, how are you gonna do a squared and b squared? What's the a squared change into? A. Just a, and the b squared also just changes into? B. b, so the first two spots in each parenthesis will be a, b, a, b. And then the square root of 144, 12, 12. Got to be able to factor this unit. Got it. <sighs> Issues yet. All right, how about three? Thank you. You got to look there first, right? I'm going to pound it, pound it. G, C, F. And there is one. What can I take out of all three of those terms? Two. Two. All right, divide two, divide everything by two. 
and I'm left with x squared. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 18 divided by 2, 9. Ooh, hold on. Again, I'm going to keep telling you you're in big boy, big girl math now. One time may not do it. See how it says factor completely? We may need to factor a second time if possible. So now look inside the parentheses right now. Let's look inside those parentheses. How many terms are there? Three and the number out in front is one. So now I have to check. It may not be doable, but I'm going to check at least. Can I find two numbers that multiply to negative nine but add to negative three? Is that doable? Because if it is, I got to keep factoring it. And if it's not, I'm done. Can anybody find two numbers? The only numbers I can think of are one and nine, and I don't think I can get a negative three from that, and three and three. And I don't think I'm going to add or subtract them together to get a negative three. So are we all in agreement? I can't factor that. All right, so it's done. That's going to be the tricky part is, am I done at the end? If you're not, we got to keep going. All right, how about four? What are you looking at for four? Yeah. Thank you, GCF. I know it's got two terms, but that doesn't mean difference of two perfect squares because three and 12 aren't and X aren't. So GCF, we'll get, whoa, whoa, we're going to take out a few things here, right? Let's start with three and 12. What can I take out from them? A three spot and see how they both have X's. So remember the rule. If they both have the same variable, you take out the one with the lowest exponent. So I'm going to take out the X to the first here. You take out the one with the lowest exponent. And then what's left here? X minus 4. 12 divided by 3, and the X's cancel. And I don't think we can go any further. How are you guys feeling, all right? I'm going to let you go on your own here in a minute. How about 5? We're not there yet, though. I don't trust you yet. 5? GCF. Right? GC, everyone see the GCF? Got to look for that first, always. So let's take out a 4. I can't take out an X because the 24 doesn't have one. All right, I take out a 4. What's left? X squared. X squared minus 20 divided by 4, which is 5X. 24 divided by 4, which is 6. Okay, hey, we may not be done, right? Just because you factor once doesn't make you great. Can you do it again? Can we factor what's inside the parentheses? Anybody think of two numbers that multiply to six? This is a tough one. Multiply to six, positive six, but add to negative five. Whoa, whoa. Usually I get this, six and one, which is true. But then I ask somebody, well, put sign, like if I do this, negative six and positive one, they add to negative five. But the problem is they don't multiply to six. Everyone see that? They don't multiply to positive six. So that's out. So, yep, it's negative 3, negative 2. And I did something incorrect up here. Got to bring down your GCF into your final answer. Yep, if you take out a GCF, it needs to come down in your final answer. All right, 6. And I'll let you do a few on your own, I think. 6. GCF? Nope. Nope. And what do you notice? 100 and x squared. Perfect squares, right? So this is difference of two perfect squares. So I'll at least put my plus minus in there. Hey, 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 though. I did this on purpose. You see how the 100's first? So the 10s have to be first. You can't just go backward. You can't just rewrite it how you want. So notice the 10s have to go first. And then your x's come second. So however the original problem is written, that's how I need it. How are we doing? Are we going too fast or? All right, let me see what's here and what I want you to do here. Uh, I want you to do eight, nine, 10 on your own. All right, skip, I want to do seven as a class. All right, so eight, nine, 10, see what you can do right now. And we'll do seven and 11 as a and 12 as a class.
Okay, I'm going to get rolling here just so I still have to talk about the assignment at the end, too. Uh, number eight, uh, did we take out a three and a Y? Both? Okay, the GCF method, three and a Y. And when you did that, you were left with Y squared minus 64. Anybody notice anything? Hopefully we didn't stop and box it in, right? What's inside the parentheses? A Y squared and a 64. Both of them are perfect squares and it's subtraction. So we should have did one more time. Y plus 8, Y minus 8. Just make sure you bring down your 3Y in there, okay? Make sure you got 3Y in there. All right, 9, GCF again. We took out a 2X. Now, pay. Hey, make sure you have this. This is why I throw this in here to fall into the trap. X squared plus 3X. Hopefully, you didn't put that parenthesis. Because remember, hey, hey, remember, when you do GCF, when I remember when we say take out a 2X, you're dividing everything by 2X. So think about it. 2X divided by anything divided by itself is still going to give you what? A one, so make sure you got a one on the end of that bad boy. And then if you did try to factor again, there are not, no numbers that multiply to one and add to three, so we are done there. And finally, 10 I asked you to do on your own. How 10 look? Another GCF? Okay, you take out a four. They both have A's in them. A, they both have B's in them. I take out the one with the lowest exponent every time. What am I left with on the first one? If I divide by 4, divide by A, and divide by B, the only thing left is a B. Everyone see that? Everything's only left is a B. And then minus 12 divided by 4 gives me 3. A and the Bs are gone. So that's what I'm left with. All right, we got a couple more here to do together. 7. <laughs> Trickiest one today. Here's why. Here's why. Everyone's like, ho, ho, 36, C squared, 100, D squared. Four for four, perfect squares. You better hold yourself first. All right? Hold it. Hold on here. You totally forgot. What do I always ask for first, though? GCF. And there is a GCF. There is a number that goes into 36 and 100. I don't want two either. I want the biggest one. The biggest one that goes into 36 and 100. So great job seeing the perfect squares, but you forgot. you got to look for the GCF. And there is a GCF, and it's not two. There's something bigger. Not too much bigger, but there is a bigger one. Make sure it goes in evenly to both. No decimals. Anybody think they found it? It is four. Four. Six doesn't go into 100. It is four. So we could take out a four. All right, what's left now? 36 divided by four. Nine. C squared, right? And then 100 divided by four. 25. D squared. Now look inside, kids. What do you still see inside? Different square, different of perfect, difference of two perfect squares. Yeah. All right. Plus and minus. What's that nine change into? 3C, 3C. And the 25. 5D, 5D. And don't forget to bring down the four. Don't write this down, but... Why is it incorrect if you did difference of two perfect squares right from the beginning? Here's why. If you did that, you'd get 6C minus 10D, and you'd get 6C plus 10D. The problem, what can you still take from a 6 and a 10? So it's still not factorable. It's still not factored all the way. That was the problem. Okay, so look for a GCF first. All right, two more, and here's where I need you to be. Here's the big boy, big girl level, because I think... You guys were pretty used to the methods we've already done, right? So here's where I need to raise it to the 12th grade level now. Woo! How about du double variables? Any GCF? Perfect squares? Well, 30, well, but not the 12, right? And the X and the Y? 
I don't know. Have I gone over this method? Yes, I have. How many terms are there? Three. What's the number still out in front? One. We can still play the game we played all day today. Ready? Don't be scared by the double variables. Two numbers that multiply to, what's the last number? I need two numbers that multiply to 36, but still add to what? Negative 12. Still the same game. I just want you to find those numbers, and I'll take you the rest of the way. So think about numbers that multiply to 36 now. Write them out if you have to, and see if you can get a negative 12 from them. Finding them? How about negative 6 and negative 6? Look good? Okay, ready? Watch. Watch how easy this is going to turn out to be. So you still have x and x, right? Because you got to get x squared. And what were my numbers? Negative 6 and? All right, but that's not correct because I still haven't talked about what variable. Isn't there a y in there? All right, no problem. Don't I need to get 36y squared here? So all I'm going to do is to get 30. I have 36 right now, right here. Hey, everyone agrees I have 36 right there. So how do I get the y squared? I put the y's with them. That's it. This guy's still the same method we've been doing all day. Multiplies to the last one, adds to the middle. It just has another variable I have to add on at the end. Questions? Think you can do that next one? Any GCF? Any GCF? Nope. How many terms? Three. Number out in front is one. Oh, we can do this. So as you're working on this right now, what are you looking for? Two numbers that multiply to nine, but at the same time will add to 10, right? Two numbers that multiply to nine, but add to 10. And I know I switched the X's and Y's, but we can handle it. So we should have Y and Y, right? We should have Y and Y. What were those numbers? Multiply to 9, add to 10. Positive 1, positive 9, right? But we just got to be disciplined. But I needed 9x squared, right? You guys just right now, you guys just gave me 9. I need 9x squared. So what do I have to put with the 1 and the 9? X's. Okay? All right, second part of this course I got to talk about, other than your effort and if you're going to stay in here or not, I can handle it the first half of the first half of the school year. Everyone see the bottom, all right? It says homework assignment. If you take a look at your syllabus, I don't have a homework grade, all right? I don't look at homework. I suggest problems every night if you want to get better. I'm never going to look at it. I will answer questions about it, but I'm never going to look at it. So how am I going to know if you're practicing or not? A uh, little thing called testing quizzes. All right, so tomorrow, don't expect, I'm not done yet, I'm not done yet. Don't expect me to walk around and say, oh, did you do it? Did you do it? And check off stuff. I don't do a homework grade. This is for you to practice so you can be great on testing quizzes. And that's the only time I'm going to know you're going to practice. So where can you find all this stuff? Ready? Take a quick peek here. Up on classroom. Unit one. Textbook pages, all right? That's anything out of the textbook. Okay, so day one, we're on day one, right? Factory, there you go. There's your textbook page to get those problems from, right there. Answers, so you can check yourself, so you can ask me questions tomorrow, hopefully. The answers, same place, unit one answers. All right, I am going to start tomorrow's class off with who has questions from that. If nobody raises their hand, I move on. Okay, you're seniors. Okay, you're seniors. All right, you know what you have to practice and what you don't have to practice. 
All right, but don't let it. Don't let me find out on the quiz or test you haven't been practicing. All right, so that's on you guys. All right, be independent, be mature about it. That's how I'm going to start class tomorrow. So try some of those problems out, and also think about as if the if this is the right place for you because this is how every day is. All right, getting you ready for the January Regents, which is why I hope you're here. And if not, I'm not going to be offended if this isn't the right place for you. I'd rather know now than uh, in December when it's too late. 